Friends, I hope um, that you are excited and ready for change, right? Because change can be difficult sometimes. Um, but change is a sign of growth also. Um, we live in Missouri, right? And so, man, if, you, if you're not used to the four seasons, sometimes in one day, um, you just can't live here um, because change can happen rapidly. Um, I know, and so I'm not glossing over the fact that change can be hard. Um, and um, you had a beautiful pastor for 10 years that was deeply loved. And, and I know that um, he holds a special place in your heart. Um, and so some of you might be processing some grief today, thinking, ah, oh, you know, there's, there's something that's missing or something that's different. And so um, that's okay to hold on to that space. It's okay to be a part um, and to be in that, okay? So I just want to give you permission for that. You won't, that doesn't offend me at all. That, that seems natural for us, right? We are humans. We experience grief and we process grief. Um, as the life of the church might look different, right? We might process grief in a way. And so that's okay to hold on to those things and to say, hmm, something feels strange. But what I do know is that, um, is that change also allows the Holy Spirit to do some pretty incredible things, right? Um, that the Holy Spirit is this living, breathing um, entity that helps to guide us and to lead us. And, um, and so um, that's the season that we're in. And so if you'll pray with me, we're going to start our message this morning. If you pray with me. Gracious God, we gather here today with open hearts, open to your spirit. We embark on this new journey together. We ask that you fill us with hope and with courage. You have, we ask that you help to guide our words and our hearts as we seek to grow in faith and love. May the words spoken today inspire us to embrace this new season with joy and anticipation. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, I am um, deeply honored um, to be standing before you this morning. If we have not met before, if, you're, if this is the first time that you've encountered me, um, you might um, want to know that eight years ago, I started as an associate pastor here, and, um, and I was an associate pastor here for three years. And then, um, then I went on um, to be a lead pastor at Adrian United Methodist Church, and our family has been there for the last five years. Um, so it seems a little bizarre. I'm just going to say it. It does. It just seems bizarre for me to be standing here today. Um, and, um, and I will share with you, this isn't a bad thing, um, but our family is also in a season of grief also because we weren't anticipating um, moving here from Adrian. Um, we, um, Adrian was this beautiful congregation that we were a part of. And so, you know, but we are our itinerant Methodist pastors. And so when the bishop says move, you move. And, um, and so um, I ask that you pray with us too as we process and reconnect and this place feels like home for us again. So whether you've been a faithful member of this congregation for many seasons or you're joining us today for the first time, I want to extend a very warm welcome to you. I hope that each of you in this new season are filled with so much hope and joy um, and excitement about new beginnings. Um, I know that my family, Becky, Lauren, Cooper, and Nadia, are extremely excited to be reunited in ministry with all of you. Um, I've had a few questions. Um, that, did we pick up an extra child? And so, Nadia, you're going to get your own special little thing. Um, so, Nadia is our bonus, uh, our bonus daughter. Um, and um, you all know Lauren and Cooper, and you know Becky. Um, and, and we like to collect people and because we love them so much. And so, Nadia is part of our beautiful family. And so, love on her like um, she is one of our own as well. So we feel like that we have truly been missionaries sent from this place five years ago, sent to a beautiful place called Adrian, Missouri, and, and that this is like a returning home to continue um, our wonderful ministry together with all of you all here at North Cross. Um, our scripture today comes from the book of Jeremiah. It's one of my favorite Old Testament um, um, Bible um, chapters, and we're going to be in chapter 29, and it's fairly short, and it says this. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to not harm you. 
plans to give you hope and a future. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. I want us to understand a little bit of the historical context and the literary context of of this um, passage, even though it's fairly short. So to understand the depths of God's promises, let's briefly revisit the context in which the words that Jeremiah wrote in this passage. You see, the prophet Jeremiah delivered his message to the Jewish people who were in exile from Babylon. The people, they were uprooted from their homeland, and they were thrust into a foreign land. Their world had been turned upside down, and they were struggling to find hope in their displacement. Anybody um, have ever struggled to find hope in their displacement or feel like you're um, in, a, in a foreign land or, or in Exodus? Yet this is what I know, is that through Jeremiah, God assured them that he had not abandoned them. Friends, if you've ever felt abandoned, I can ensure you, God is with you. You are not abandoned. He has a plan for us, a plan for our welfare, for our hope, and for our future. So just as the Jewish exiles have entered into a new and an uncertain season, we are stepping into a new chapter and a new season together right here at North Cross. Many of you have journeyed with this church for many, many, many years. You've witnessed its growth. You've witnessed its transformation. But maybe some of you feel like you've been in a season of exile. Maybe perhaps you've distanced yourself from the church for one reason or another. Maybe some of you are here for the very first time. If you are a first-time visitor, welcome. We are so thankful that God brought you to this place. We believe that God brought you to this place for a reason. It wasn't just by chance. There's a reason why we are all here today. So today I want to speak to all of us about this idea of embracing a new season with hope and with courage. God's promise to the exiles is the promise to each and every one of us that sits here today. In this time, one of the things that you might have noticed was a different altar in the sanctuary this morning. Now, I hope that that hasn't given you anxiety. Um, while the altar is um, a very sacred thing, um, again, it's a thing, right? Our relationship with Jesus is what is the most important thing. But I want you to focus on this altar for just a moment, okay? Like I said before, it was once this towering cottonwood. I didn't get to see what the tree looked like before, but I could imagine it might have been 50 or 60 feet tall just by seeing the the size of the the base that this little piece of wood that was cut out of. I mean, it had a a diameter of, of easily, you know, 24 to 30 inches. So it was a massive tree. A tree that stood vibrant. I don't know, maybe it was in somebody's front yard, but maybe it was in the middle of the woods. I don't know its story or where it was at. And that reminds me of each of you. I don't know everybody's story and where you came from or, or what, you know, you, where you might have been or what setting you have been in. This piece of wood, this cottonwood tree, it experienced seasons, Right? It had to endure winter. It had to endure the scorching Missouri summers, spring, and fall. Now, a lot of time, pieces of wood simply get cut down, and they get turned into ashes, right? And they disappear, never to be seen again. This piece of wood has a different story. It has a different trajectory in its life. It now stands before you as God's altar, holding the light of Christ, holding the bread of life. Friends, just as this piece of wood has found new purpose, so too can we find purpose in seasons of change. Our lives, like this altar, are being shaped and they are being refined for God's glory, not for our glory. We are not here by accident, friends. God has a plan for us. God has a plan for each of you. This altar is a testimony to the beauty that can emerge from transformation and from change. This altar and this wood that it is made from, it symbolizes new hope and a new journey together. 
It symbolizes something that God made. And he made it pretty special, I think. As we begin this journey together, I hope that we can start this um, season of forming really deep relationships with one another. This church, where we sit today, is simply a building. We don't need this building to worship God. We're fortunate that we have this building, right? It is very beautiful. Many people have sacrificed to build this beautiful place. But it is just a building. We together, friends, are a collective community of believers. We are the body of Christ alive today, the hands and feet of Christ alive today to do his work. One of the phrases that I spoke in Adrian, and let me pause for just a second. I promise you that the whole season of life that, we're, that I'm your pastor, I'm not going to be revisiting stories about Adrian, okay? I promise you I'm not going to do that. But I do believe in the connectional church, okay? We are United Methodists, and the connectional church is strong, Okay? And so if I happen to share a story here or there about a season of, of life when we were in Adrian, it's not meant to discredit your season at all. It's to speak about how beautiful the connection is and how we are to uplift all United Methodists from here to Adrian to Mozambique to Vietnam to wherever God might call us, right? So... As we um, strive to look at these very meaningful connections, our goal is this, is that we grow deeper and deeper and deeper in our faith. The story that I was going to tell you about Adrian is when I first started, some of the things you hear is, well, I don't really help with that because I already did my time. Okay? Okay. Well, God doesn't do that. And so I came up with this little phrase that I think is really important. That until both feet are in the grave and God has taken all the breath out of your lungs, you don't get to stop serving Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's a privilege to serve Jesus Christ. He needs you. He needs all of us because the mission it's getting harder and harder and harder. I want us to form really deep connections with Jesus. Our ultimate goal is to go deeper with our relationship with Jesus. In times of change and uncertainty, it is our faith in Jesus Christ that gets us through and anchors us. So let us commit to growing in our knowledge, in our love in Jesus, and allowing the teachings of Jesus to penetrate all of who we are. God calls us to be courageous, friends. The work that we're called to requires us to be courageous. This new season presents opportunities for us to step out into faith and to do brave things together. Whether it's starting new ministries, whether it's reaching out to our community, or simply being a light in our neighborhood, let's embrace new opportunities with boldness and trust in God's guidance together. Change can be challenging, friends, but it's often through change that we grow the most. So I hope that we can approach this new season of change with open hearts and open minds, be willing to be transformed by the Holy Spirit, just as the exiles in Babylon were called to settle and seek the welfare of their new home, let us invest in the future of North Cross United Methodist Church with enthusiasm and with dedication. Let us be an invitational church. There are many out there who are longing for a place to belong. The community uh, needs to reflect the love of Christ. And friends, we, we can't really imagine who might need to be in relationship with us. We just have to be ready to receive them when they might decide to step foot into this place. So let's be invitational on our journey together. Let's extend the same warmth and the same welcoming that we might have experienced together. Can we do that? 
I don't know how many are here this morning. Who, who's, the, who's my counter? Who, who counts? Did anybody count? PJ. PJ, did you count? 169. So this is what I know, friends. Oh, we don't need to, we don't need to cut for that. But it, this is what I know. There's 169 souls here this morning. All of you, every single one of you, even the baby in the back, you're going to invite somebody this week because you've experienced life change. And so next week when you come, there might not be 169. There might be 340, right? Isn't that our hope? Isn't that what we're called to do? We're called to be invitational and to be an invitational church. And so that's my prayer for you this week. We are standing on this threshold of a new season. I am filled with hope and excitement that God has in store for us. And let us hold fast to the promise that Jeremiah 29 says that trusting that God has a plan for us, filling us with hope and with the future. So I hope that we can embrace this season with courage, forming deeper relationships, and a deeper connection with Jesus, doing brave things, embracing change, and being invitational. So I want to share a bit about who I am, just in case you might not know who I am, and this is the first time that you've met me, and the season and why the season um, has brought me to this place. Maybe you're not United Methodist and you kind of question, well, why do we have pastoral changes, right? So I've been blessed to serve as a pastor for the last 12 years. I'm an ordained elder, and I've had the privilege of serving um, Adrian United Methodist Church for the last five years. Previous to Adrian, I served here for three years as an associate pastor. Previous to that, our family was in Joplin, Missouri, as an associate pastor of missions and outreach at um, St. Paul United Methodist Church. And previous to that, I was a pastor at Meadowbrook United Methodist Church in Gladstone. So during our time um, over the last five years, that we, as we have been sent out as missionaries, that church taught me how to be brave and courageous, trusting in God's abundance and pursuing huge God-sized dreams. I have to brag on them a little bit this morning because they truly embrace God-sized dreams. Over the last five years, that little teeny tiny congregation in the middle of the Missouri countryside they opened a transitional homeless shelter. They housed over 35 people in the last two years for over 450 nights. I think that's what God wants the church to do, right? They established a full-time daycare open from 7 to 5 because working parents need a place to send their family and their kids. They have over 30 kids every day show up in that place they get poured into with love. They launched a nonprofit ministry this last year, starting a 17 unit housing project because there's a housing crisis in rural America. And they wanted to see that people could have the basic necessities of life, a place to live. They added a state of the art playground in the middle of COVID, six months after their new pastor got there. In the middle of COVID, they shut the sanctuary down. And they did a $125,000 capital campaign in three months to renovate their sanctuary. They had God-sized dreams. They were faithful and fruitful. They were living into these God-sized dreams that I am confident, friends, that we at North Cross United Methodist Church can also have God-sized dreams too. Amen? I believe in my heart that one day soon, we will be worshiping collectively together around 600 people. Just put that in your, in your mental brain, brain, okay? 600 is just our first goal, but that won't stop us from there, right? I believe that on a Sunday morning, this whole front area might be filled with children during children's time. Because they so yearn to know the good news. And they've been brought here by each and every one of you to be cared for. 
We will be a richly diverse congregation of families, of children, senior adults. We will all be living into this reality of a unified mission to bring about hope to the world. And friends, the world needs a little bit of hope. So what are my values as a pastor and what are some of the ways that I lead? I believe that God has prepared me for this special time. And I believe that God has prepared me as a pastor to have a few special gifts that I think are unique to me. Reed Hoffman is a co-founder of LinkedIn. And Reed Hoffman says this. He says, an entrepreneur is somebody who jumps off a cliff and builds a plane on the way down. Okay. It takes courage. Friends, we're not only going to jump off the cliff together, okay? We're going to jump off the cliff not knowing all the plans and all the details because we're leaving a little margin about faith that God is going to help us, right? And not only are we going to build this plane on the way down, friends, it's going to soar. It's going to soar like we've never seen it soar before. It's going to take us to heights that we've never could imagined. And do you know who's going to get the glory? God alone. God alone. And then the thing that we all want that will happen, the plan will eventually land safely with all of us on it. Right? Because we need safety and security. We can't always live in a place of anxiousness. We will experiment, friends, and sometimes we will fail, okay? Sometimes we're going to fail. And when we do fail, we need grace because that's who our Jesus is. He gives us grace every single day but we will always be led by faith. Our accomplishments will be the ones that we look back and we recognize as miracles only made possible by the promise of Jesus Christ. As we embark on this journey together, I hope that we can embrace the changes and the opportunities that lie ahead with hope and with courage. I've said this a couple times already. I hope that we're ready for deep, deep relationships a deepening connection with Jesus Christ, big, big dreams, God-sized dreams. Next week, I invite you to return with one of your friends that maybe doesn't have a church home, and I invite you to continue on this journey together with us. We will explore what it means to be a church that is missionally focused, not method-driven. We will talk about how we can have a transformative impact on our community. Together, friends, we are going to witness the miracles in our midst. We're going to go forth from this day filled with hope and anticipation about this incredible journey that God has us embarked on together. Amen. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you for the gift of this new season. Fill us with your spirit. Give us the hope and the courage we need to move forward. Help us to build deep relationships, to grow closer to Jesus, and to bravely embrace the changes ahead. May we be a light in our community, inviting others to join us on this journey of faith. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.